church. I'm going to share a scripture with you from Psalms chapter 71, uh, verses 14 and 15. It says, I will praise you more and more. I will tell everyone about your righteousness. All day long I will claim your saving power. Father, I thank you for your righteousness and I thank you for your goodness towards us. And Father, we invite you into our service today and into our hearts and yes. our lives. Yes. Father, come and do your work in us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen.
Jesus paid the price and his scars proved what the sacrifice that he made for us, amen. And, and so we want to honor him today. As I mentioned uh, on our Facebook that we will be doing communion today. And so if you have your elements, great, go ahead and get those ready. If not, run your kitchen, grab some crackers, some juice, you know, whatever it's going to take. Uh, we, we do want to uh, have communion uh, t uh, today. Um, you know, communion is a very special time for, for Christians as we uh, recognize what Jesus did for us. And so um, we want to we celebrate that. We want to recognize the, the sacrifice and, and uh, the, the thing that he did for us, that, that he, he died on the cross for us. He redeemed our life of all of our sins and our, all of our unrighteousness. And that he made a way for that, not only for our sins to be forgiven, but he made a way for us to have eternal life. And so that's what we want to do today. So if you have your elements uh, today, go ahead and, and get those ready. Um, you know, in, in participating in the Lord's Supper, it's, it's an, it is an important element uh, of our Christian faith. And, and communion is, is a time, as I said before, it's a time to memorialize the atoning death of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a time to, uh, to just acknowledge his living presence in our life. And so we want to do that today. We want to acknowledge that, you know, when as a Christians, we, um, we accept, when we accept Jesus Christ into our heart, he, he changes our spirit. He regenerates. He creates a new spirit within us. And so we want to acknowledge that in our life. He does live within us. He, he has taken over our lives, so to speak, and recreated us to be brand new. And so um, here at Greater Hope, we, we welcome all people to participate in, in the Lord's Supper. Uh, adults that, and, and kids as well, as long as you've accepted Jesus Christ, we welcome you to be a part of this service with us today. And so um, the Bible tells us to... Uh, to examine our hearts before we take these communion elements, to really uh, to, 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 to see if there's anything that might be keeping us from having a, a pure relationship, not only with him, but with other people in our lives. The Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 9, to confess our sins, to confess our sins to him, and that he is faithful and that he is just to forgive us of all of our unrighteousness. He's able to cleanse us of our sins. Even as Christians, we make mistakes. We do, and we need to go to God every day and, and just examine our heart and say, God, I made a mistake. Please forgive me. So right now, before we take these elements today, I want to just give us just a few minutes uh, and, and just give us an opportunity to examine our own heart. The Bible says, create in us a, a pure heart, O oh God, and a steadfast spirit within us. And so let's just go to God. If there's anything that you have... Uh, you know, you feel like you need to ask God for forgiveness about whether in a relationship with him or with other people. Let's do that right now. Just bow your heads and close your eyes and just go to God and say, God, forgive me. God, forgive me for having this wrong attitude. God, forgive me for doing, for doing this. I, I know it was wrong. Father, we come to you, Lord, in, in the name of Jesus. Father, we, we examine our hearts today. And we ask you, God, just to, to cleanse us of all un unrighteousness. God, cleanse us of any, any bad attitudes or, or wrong feelings that we have toward you or toward other people. Thank you, Father, for cleansing our heart today. Thank you, Father, for, for making us right with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. I'm going to be quoting uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting in verse 23, it says that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and said, Take, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Well, this bread represents the body of Christ. It represents that his body was broken and it was bruised that our sins could be forgiven. Amen. It also symbolizes that Jesus is the bread of life. He is the bread of life. He gives us life spiritually in every, in any, every other way. He gives us life. So this is what Jesus did. His body was broken for us. And then it goes on to say in verse 25, 
It said, in the same manner, he also took the cup. After supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Well, this cup, this juice, it represents the blood of Jesus that he shed on the cross for us. Amen? And the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sins. So that's why Jesus had to go to the cross, so that our sins could be forgiven. He provided a new covenant for us to, to partake in. And so as we take these elements today, we want to remember that the, the bread and the juice is a new covenant with God. It's a new covenant with God that made possible through the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as we hold up this bread and this, and this juice today, we receive the forgiveness of sins in our life and we receive eternal life through Him in Christ Jesus. Let's go ahead and take the bread. And the juice. Let's just go to prayer to God right now. Father God, we just thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, God. He willingly gave up his life. He willingly sacrificed his life so that we can have life. Father, we thank you, God, that the blood and the body of Jesus was sacrificed so that our sins could be forgiven and that we could have eternal life, dear God, with you. So, Father God, we praise you today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving up your life for us. We thank you, God, that we have a new covenant with you, that we, have, we are part of your family. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. amen. I want to welcome everybody to our service today. Welcome everyone who's watching online. And uh, we want to thank you for, for joining in and being part of our service. Um, we, uh, it's going to be a good day, amen? amen? One of my favorite scriptures, Psalms 118.24, says that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I say that scripture probably every day I wait, when I wake up. I just thank you, God, for this is the day you have made. And we start our day out with, with that kind of an attitude, that kind of a thought. It sets us up for a good day. He has created. It doesn't mean that we're going to experience bad things in our life. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't mean that we're going, we may not ever experience you know, ups and downs. But, it, you know, but faith in God, it can make it a good day. He can turn those bad things and turn them into good. Amen. So this is going to be a good day today. Um, before I get into my message, I do want to encourage everyone, if you're, if you're tuned in right now, thank you again for joining us. Um, I think I have a really good message for you. I'm going to be continuing a series on being led by God. But at the end of my service today, I do want to make a very special announcement uh, about what we as a country have been experiencing uh, through the, the civil unrest that, uh, um, through the death of George Floyd. And so uh, please, please hang on to the very end. I do want to make a very sp special um, uh, comment on that but um, to, today I, I want to um, start uh, do part two of my series uh, last week I did a message uh, um, in starting up my series of me led by God uh, titled trusting God's timing I hope you hope you caught that it is on Facebook and it is uh, on our YouTube channel I know there for, or last week it somehow I put it on and then it came off again, but I reloaded it. I think it's all on there now. So check that message out if you haven't, if you didn't catch it last week, trusting God's timing. And, and the, just let me quickly summarize last week's message. If, you know, if we're, if we're going to be led by God, if we're going to be led by God, then we, we have to have faith in God, but we also have faith in his timing. And, and I said last week that sometimes it can be easy to have faith in God, but not so easy to have faith in his timing. And so um, it, it's so easy to put our faith in other things, to put our faith in our own feelings, or maybe put our faith in what other people are saying to us, what we see on social media or on TV. 
We need to put faith in God. We need to be led by God and not by what we see or not by what we hear. We need to be led by God and not be influenced by people around us or, or, or things that we see on, on the Internet or whatnot. I shared, I shared a scripture last, uh, last week in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4. I want to repeat it again today. It says, uh, farmers who wait for perfect weather, they never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. Well, the whole meaning behind the scripture is this, that we, ne we will never end up doing what God wants us to do because we are putting, our, uh, if we don't put our trust in God, we need, instead of calculating what other, think, other people say or, or just doing what we, what we think, we need to put our faith and trust in God. And so, as a farmer, if he waits for that perfect forecast from the weatherman, he will never end up planting his seed, and he'll never end up harvesting a crop if he simply waits on what the weatherman tells him. And so it's important that we put our faith and trust in God. Trusting God timing means this, that we're going to have to put aside our own agenda. We're going to have to put aside our own timing and, and really put aside our own way of thinking because God's ways are higher than our ways, right? And so it doesn't mean that we're supposed to be brain dead. It doesn't mean we're supposed to not think, but we are supposed to put more weight on what God tells us. And so that was the whole, whole uh, meaning behind last week's message. We also need to be careful not to allow fear to, to, and our emotions to paralyze us from doing what God wants to do. Because sometimes fear can do that. It can paralyze you and you end up doing nothing for God. And sometimes you end up doing nothing for yourself either. You can become so paralyzed. Fear has a way of, of rendering people from doing and thinking and acting normally. It, ha it has that, that kind of power. So you all remember the story that I shared last week about Jairus, and his daughter was at the point of death. And on the way, to, uh, he asked Jesus to go and, he, and heal his daughter, and on the way there, he stopped. And, and after he, he ministered to the people there, uh, a friend, a family member, a friend came to Jairus and said, don't bother the master, your daughter's already dead. And at that moment, Jesus recognized the fear that was in this, man's, in this man's heart. And he said this to him, do not be afraid, only believe. What would have happened if he just would have went by the opinion of what this person said to him? Yeah, your daughter's dead. What if he would just go, go with the fact that, uh, that he should just tell the master, no, forget it, you don't, there's no point. His daughter would have never come back to life. That's why we need to put our faith in God. No matter what other people may say to us, no matter the circumstance that we experience in life, we have to put our faith and trust in God. So if we put our trust and we put our faith in God and in His timing, then we are setting ourselves up to be led by God. And that's the whole point of this whole series. God wants to lead us. I know that our God is committed in this area of guidance. He's committed in it. He wants and he desires for us to be led by him. And so for the next couple of messages, I want to address how we best can be led by God. What must we do to hear and to know what God is wanting us to do? What must we do? What must we, uh, you know, how should we go about this? You know, the first thing that, that we must realize is that God... He has a plan and a purpose for our lives. Amen? He has a plan and he wants us to, he wants to lead us not only for the overall plan that he has for our life, but in every phase, in every season of our life, he wants to be a part of that. He wants to lead us. He wants to lead us during our childhood years. He wants to lead us in our adolescence and in our teenage years. He wants to lead us as, as, as we choose a career path. He wants to lead us, you know, when we are looking for a perfect mate. He wants to lead us as, you know, when we experience struggles and difficulties in our life. He wants to lead us and guide us in every experience and disappointments or setbacks in every area of our life. That's God's desire for us. And we need to learn how to really be truly be led by God and not these other things that may influence us. You know, when it comes to being led by God, we must have complete faith and complete trust in God. And so I want you to turn to Proverbs chapter 3. 
verse 5 and 6. I'm going to start there, there today with my message. Um, putting our trust and faith in God's Word. And it says in Proverbs 3, 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He, he shall direct your path. Man, this scripture is loaded with advice on, on how to be led by God. Number one, we, we first need to put our trust in Him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Secondly, we, we're told not to lean on our own understanding. You know when you lean on something, you're putting your weight on it, correct? And God, God's warning is don't lean on your own understanding. Don't put all your weight on just what you think. We need to put our weight on what God thinks. It doesn't mean we're not supposed to think about other things. You know, it's, not, it's not that we're not supposed to contemplate other ideas. We're not, just supposed to, we're not supposed to put our weight on those things. We're supposed to put our faith and trust in Him. And then thirdly, we are to acknowledge Him. Acknowledge Him in all of our ways. Not some of our ways. Not just, one, not just the ones that feel good to us, right? But in all of our ways. And then, it says, He will direct our path. How many want that to happen in your life? That you want God to direct your path? He does. That means we have to trust Him. We have to not lean on our understanding. We have to acknowledge Him in everything that we do. That doesn't mean you have to wake up in the morning and say, God, okay, what color shirt should I wear today? You know, no, don't, we can't be silly. But God does want to direct our life, right? Yes. Verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You know, when we have an important decision to make, we sometimes feel that we can't trust anyone. And sometimes we feel like we can't even trust God. We know those important decisions in life. But when God knows, how many know that God knows what's best for us, right? Amen. He knows what's best for us. And, 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 and He's a better judge at telling us what really is best for us than, than, our, than we ourselves. And so we must trust Him completely in every choice that we make. We should not... Uh, we should not omit careful thinking and, 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 and belittle uh, God's uh, given ability for us to reason. No, He wants us to think. He wants us to reason. But we, are, should not, we, we should not just trust our own thinking and exclude everything else. We need to put, our, put more weight on what God tells us. We must not be wise in our own eyes, but be willing to listen and to be corrected by God's Word and His wise counsel. Amen? You know, bringing your decision to God in prayer is important. Using God's word in your life as a guide and then following God's lead is things that we need to do in our, throughout our life. It says he will direct our path both by guiding and protecting us. Amen. Yes. Verse 6 says, in all your ways, in all your ways acknowledge him. And then, and then, and then, he shall direct your path. Sometimes, well, I go to church, right? So I go to church, but that's not all your ways, you know? You may go to work and live like a heathen, right? You may go and, and treat your family wrong when you get home. No, in all your ways. Going to church, that's great. Even reading your Bible, that's great. But if you're not acknowledging God in other areas of your life, then you, you may be missing out on, on everything that God is wanting you to do. To receive God's guidance, Solomon said that we must seek God's will in all that we do. That means in every area of our life. Amen. Turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. About a thousand years later, Jesus emphasized this same principle, basically. He said in Matthew 6, 33, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and in all these things shall be added, and all these things shall be added to you. We must examine our values. We need to examine our priorities. Let me ask you this. What is important to you? What's important to you? You know, we have to ask that question every day. Is God and what, his, and what he's trying to tell you to do, is that more important to you than, than you just doing your own thing? You know? In what areas have you not acknowledged him or allowed him to change you? Those are some of the questions that we need to ask ourselves. I've heard some people say, oh, I know I'm a little rough around the edges, but that's just my personality. Well, you know what? You might need to change your personality, right? 
know, there are other people that are very eloquent and, and persuasive in their speech. Man, they sound so nice and so convincing, but they use it to lie to you. They use it to manipulate your ways. They have to be careful there as well. Amen? You may already acknowledge God in many, many areas of your life, and, that, and that's great. We need, to, we need to do that. But the areas where you attempt to restrict God, to ignore Him, man, it's going to cause you some grief. It's going to cause you some grief. Seeking first the kingdom of God and making Him a vital part of everything that you do, then He will guide you because you'll be, willing to, you'll be working to accomplish His purpose and His plan for your life. Now, I want, to turn, I want you to turn to um, the main scripture I have for today in Psalms 119, 130. Psalms 119, 130. This is one of my favorite scriptures as it pertains to God's word. And it says this, that the entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. The entrance God's word coming into you gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I believe that true clarity, true clarity being led by God starts with the entrance of God's word into your heart. It's God's word into your mind. Knowing and understanding God's word, man, it's vital, absolutely vital to being led by God. That's why reading and, and knowing God's word shall be a, should be a priority in your life. I'm a firm believer in getting into God's Word. I'm a firm believer also in, in memorizing God's, God's Word. You know, one of the main points I want to bring out today is about knowing God's Word is that we have to do more. We have to do more than just read God's Word. You know, I, I, I've heard some people that, that, you know, they kind of brag about reading through the entire Bible in a year's time. And that's great. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but... You know, you can read through the Bible and it will produce some fruit in your life, there's no doubt. But if you just simply read the Word of God like you read a good novel, um, I'm, I'm not sure that it's really going to do you that much good. You know, you never, if you never really contemplate and, and examine God's Word, what does this mean to me? Then you're just reading it like a novel and you're really not going to get that much out of it. One of my favorite scriptures also is in John 6.63. I don't have it on the screen here, but it says, It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Man, God's word, that rhema word, not just the logos word, but the rhema word. That's what this scripture has to do with, John 6.63. It is the Spirit that gives life. The words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. God's word brings life. It will illuminate his principles and his life into your life. Amen? I think one of the best ways to receive and to be led by the Spirit of God is through reading his word and, and to breaking it down into small sections or sp small segments and, and, and then ask yourself, what does this mean to me? Where, where do I fit in in all this, right? As you read that little scripture, you read that, that paragraph, you ask yourself, how does this fit into, into my life? Am I doing this? Am I not doing this? Am I applying God's biblical principle to my life or am I not? You have to do that as you read the word of God. Otherwise, it's just a logos word and not a rhema word. You have to allow it to come in. You know, one of the gr greatest lessons I ever learned uh, when I was, uh, attended college, uh, my private trombone instructor, uh, Mr. George Krem. He taught me that the quickest and most effective way of learning a, a piece of music was to break it down into small pieces. He, he called it compartmentalizing. You take a, a long piece of music and you break it down. Break it down as, as small as you need to. You may have to break it down into two lines of music. You may have to break it down to just, just to one measure of music and just work on that. It's a method of dividing a difficult piece of music into a more manageable, and, uh, and, and, and feasible way of learning. And we need to do that in reading God's Word. You allow God to speak into you through His Word. Break it down. And then we must deliberately and intentionally weigh God's Word and how it applies to our life. And again, that needs to be intentional. It's not going to happen automatically. You need to ask yourself, how does this apply to me? 
How do, am I doing what God says in His Word? Am I allowing it to... to uh, is my conversation, is, are my actions lining up to the principles of God's Word? But for, some, for many people, though reading God's Word, it's not used so much to examine their own life, or bettering their own life, it's used to call, call judgment on other people's lives, right? Come on, I, I know you know what I'm talking about. And we probably all have done it, right? And probably more so than we need to. Now, how often have you heard people quoting Scripture and then automatically say, you know, that's what they're not doing. That's what they're, you know, they're, they're, they're in sin, you know. And they'll use Scripture to point out other people. Sometimes that might be necessary, you know, but for the most part, it should be used to bring guidance to our own life. To our own life. How often do we use God's Word as a lens, as a lens to examine our own life, to examine our own actions as it pertains to the principle of God's Word? It's like, it's like using a mirror, okay? That mirror, you look at yourself. You don't use it to look at other people. You use it to look at yourself. And that's how we need to use God's Word as a way to examine ourselves. But too often, people don't use a mirror. They use a magnifying glass, right? They use a magnifying glass. I see this in you, right? You're not doing this. That's not what God says. And so we end up using this more than we use this, right? And I think our world would be a much better place if we start changing ourselves instead of trying to change other people. The entrance, the entrance of God's words brings light. When you put God's word in your heart, you'll begin to see, man, I'm not doing something. I'm not doing what God tells me to do. It will illuminate. It will bring to night. It, it, it illuminates the things in our world and in our life that's covered in darkness. Because there are some things, in, even in our own personal life, that we just do not see it. We don't see it. We allow things that we... Um, decide to listen to or decide to watch that in a sense creates a darkness in our life and we don't see the whole picture you know there are many things that we simply don't know and we just can't see we haven't allowed the light of God's word to reveal it to us the entrance of God's word starts with the desire to want to get God's word in our life we need to have that desire. We need to have that desire more than, more than anything else. God, what do you want to say to me? It should be our desire to want to know and to read and study and allow God's Word to help us to learn and to grow and to do better. Amen? Help us to, to teach us, to correct us, and maybe even to, to convict us of things that we know we shouldn't have, have, have done. One of my favorite scriptures in... in as far as putting God's word in your heart, is in Proverbs chapter 4, um, verse 20 through 22. It says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my, to my sayings. Keep them in the midst of your... Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. We need to give attention to God's word. We need to incline his, incline his word to our ears. Let, let our ears hear it. Do not let them depart from your eyes. We need to keep our eyes glued to what God's word says. And, and, that, and, that, we, and that we keep it in the midst of our heart. And when we do all that, then it says, for, then, then we'll have life and then we will have health of our flesh. The benefits of giving attention to God's word, the benefits of hearing, the benefits of seeing, the benefits of keeping God's word in your heart is that you give life he gives life to those who find them. You have to find them. You have to look for them. You have to listen for them. You have to apply it to your heart. And then health will come to your flesh. God's word brings life. God's word brings a healing to our bodies. John 1.1 1, 1 says this, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 5 later on goes on to say, In him was life. Jesus became the word. He is the living word. He is the one who brings life. Amen. And it's through Jesus that the living word of God is through his living presence in our life that we receive life and that we receive health to all of our flesh. Another favorite scripture of mine pertaining to God's word is in Joshua 1.8. 
a, a scripture I'm sure you're, you're all very familiar with. It says that the book of the law, in Joshua 1, 8, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. We're talking about being led by God. To be led by God, to be successful, comes from meditating, according to the Scripture, meditating in God's Word, and being careful to act in accordance to all that is written in it. We have to know what God's Word says, and then we have to act upon it. Those two things go hand in hand. To get to the place in your life where you can be led by the Spirit of God, you must first be able to recognize His voice. You have to recognize His voice if you're going to be led by Him. And the best way to be, recognize His voice is through His living Word. Right here. You have to, this is His voice. This is the most common way to hear God's voice in your life. It's reading His written Word. We can hear Him by His Spirit. Sometimes His Holy Spirit will speak to our spirit. But this is the most common way of knowing what God's voice is and what it sounds like. What it means to meditate on God's Word. What does it mean? It means to stop and think about what you're reading. Just stop and think about it and allow the Holy Spirit to bring new revelation even to a verse that you may have read a hundred times. And that's happened to me many times. I've read a scripture, and then later on I'll read the same scripture, and something else just comes out. And so we need to, to meditate. That's, that's the whole purpose of meditating. Meditating on God's Word is more than just reading a, a, the Bible, like, like I said, like reading a novel. If you want to really get something out of God's Word, if you really want to be led by God, then you need to have a pretty good understanding of what God's Word says. And you don't have to be, you, you don't have to be overwhelmed with that. You don't have to say, well, man, I need to read 100 scriptures today. I need to read 100 paragraphs today. I need to, I need to read the, the entire Bible. Great if you do that. But if you're not taking time to meditate, if you're not taking time to con- contemplate of how God's Word may apply to you, then you're not going to get much out of it. All right? It's like a miner who go, goes into a mine, and they're mining for gold, right? And, and they may not, they, they just may be in that cave, And just watching all the other miners, they're chipping away and they're getting great big chunks of gold, but they're just standing back watching it, right? Well, they may walk out of there with a few gold dust on their shoulders. They may end up getting something out of that. But if they're not digging, right? They're not digging and and, and getting into into the Word of God, you're not going to come away with a chunk of gold. You're going to come away with just a few, few things in your life, right? Meditating in God's Word is more than just reading it. You know, when you meditate on the Word of God, you're training your human spirit to recognize God's voice. And the more in tune with what He has to say to you, that's, that's what you do. You're training your, your, your mind. That's why the Bible tells us to renew our mind. Our spirit man, when you ask Jesus into your heart, your spirit man, man that, Jesus did a, did a miracle there. It's your mind that you have to keep working on. And that's, what, that's the whole point of meditating in God's Word, right? Reading God's Word and meditating on God's Word help us to hear the voice of God and to be led by God. I heard a true story of a man that he grew up just dirt poor. Dirt poor. He didn't own a pair of shoes until he was 12 years old. With only a fifth grade education and having come from an extremely poor family, he had not been given the opportunity to succeed in life. Absolutely none. Yet this man, he was from Texas, but he became a multimillionaire. Without any formal training, without any formal uh, education, he had become extremely wealthy through investments. And in fact, he had never lost a dime, he said, not, in, not even in one single investment. How did he do it? Well, his story goes like this. He said, I always, he said, I always do this. When someone comes along with an idea for an investment, I don't allow myself to think about it mentally. He said, I go into my closet and I pray. I wait as long as it takes until I hear something, he said. He said, sometimes it takes as long as maybe three days. I come out for some meals and and a little sleep, but mainly I I remain quiet and, and alone with the Lord until I know from an inward witness what I am to do. 
And he shared that there were times that where, when, when people would give him ideas, and it seemed like a really good idea. But he went and prayed about it, and an inward witness told him, don't do it. And then other times he said, uh, it looked like a dead-end opportunity. Like, man, that, I can't make any money off this. But the Spirit told him, go ahead and invest in it. And he said every single time he made the right choice by following that inward witness uh, that God gave him special insight, insight to a supernatural, and so he could actually become financially uh, successful. The man took time. What did he do? He took time to develop and to train his human spirit to be led by the Spirit of God. And he did this by how? By getting into God's Word, first of all. He, 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 not just, he didn't just pray about it. He studied God's Word as well. I'm going to be talking about more of this is you know, about being led by the Spirit of God and other ways of being, being led by the Spirit of God. But reading God's Word is one way that we train ourselves to actually recognize God's voice. But today's point is about knowing and meditating on God's Word. This is one of the most important things with, that we can do if you want to be led by God, is getting into God's Word and allowing the Word of God, the rhema Word of God, to become life to you. We have to block out those voices that may confuse us and misguide you, right? Block out the news. Definitely block out the news. Block out the social media. Block out Facebook, right? Block it out. You may even have to block out what your best friend may tell you. Because some people may come to you with, with great intentions, you know, but it may not be what God wants for you, right? You know, what did that millionaire do? He went to his closet and prayed. He didn't get on the phone. He didn't get on social media. He didn't get, you know, he didn't start asking his friends. He, he went to God. He got alone with God. And it was intentional to seek out what God would lead him to do and not what the best investors were doing. Too often we go to other sources for advice. We do. And I'm guilty of it as well. I spend way too much time, you know, scrolling through Facebook and took way too much time just seeing what I see on the internet. You have to go to God first. Get away. Block it out. Turn it off and let God speak into your life. Too often we seek out our, our like-minded, and I emphasize like-minded friends, our like-minded sources that will tell us what we want to hear. Am I right? We go to those people because we really want them to say, yeah, you're right. Instead of them telling, hey, I don't think you're right there. Then you'll go to someone else that will agree with you. Right? We have to get to a point when we say, Lord, man, this is not my life. This is your life. You gave it to me. You gave it to me. You have a purpose and a plan for my life. So I'm going to humble myself before you, God, and, and truly allow you to lead my life. Are you doing that? I hope you are. And there, and there may be times that we need to do it more in our life. I know I do. We really need to, you know, especially in today's day and age, you know, before the days of cell phones, before the days of Internet, we didn't have all these voices speaking into our life. And so it was much easier to, to listen to God because we didn't have these hundreds and thousands of voices. You know, when my parents, uh, you know, growing up with my parents, it was a ritual for them to, when they got up in the morning, they would get out the Des Moines Register and, and read the paper in the morning, have a cup of coffee, have, have, a, have a slice of cinnamon toast, and, and then go to work, you know. But today, you know, we, we're on our cell phones 24-7, it seems like, you know. And we're being influenced by all these thousands and thousands of voices and opinions. And no wonder we get confused. No, mon no wonder we get so... Um, stressed out because we don't know who to believe now. Well, if you don't know who to believe, it, it, that's a good sign that you're listening to the wrong voices. You've got too many voices speaking into you. We need to listen to God. If you're listening to this message and, and you know that you haven't been following God the way you should, I would pray that you would allow the Spirit of God to correct you. Allow, allow the Spirit of God to, to help you see and help, help you make the changes in your life that you can best be led by God. If you haven't obeyed God and His instructions and, and His principles in your life, 
Now's a good time to start. Now, that's the thing about God. It's never too late. It is never too late. Lord knows I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. And I thank God that His mercy and His grace, that He, he, didn't, he didn't count me out. He didn't say, oh, you, you've made too many, you're done. That's not our God. No matter what you may have faced in your life, no matter wh where you are in your life right now, you may not be a Christian, you may not have ever asked Jesus into your heart, and you may think, well, what's the point? God will never accept me. Oh, yes, He will. Yes, He will. He wants to lead you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life, but it requires you doing something. And, 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 and the first thing we have to do is to simply, God, I surrender myself to you. Whether you're, whether you're a non-believer or whether you're a believer, that needs, that, that needs to be a statement in our life every day. God, I surrender myself to you. Sometimes you can be a Christian for so long that you, you end up um, taking God for granted and, 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 and you, you really haven't um, allowed God to direct your life. You think you have all the answers now that you've, that you've read through the Bible a couple of times, right? That's not how it is. We need to humble ourselves and to trust God. Let's declare that the entrance of God's Word would illuminate those things that God wants to show us in our life. He may, he may want to confirm, say, hey, yes, you're on the right path. But He may say, hey, you need, you need to take a left turn here. You may need to take a right turn. You may need to stop. Right? We need to listen to what God's Word says. Let's just pray right now. For any of you that are watching online, our online congregation, or if you just happen to tune in to our, our broadcast, and you know that God's speaking to you, you know that you really haven't been listening to God, you haven't been tuning in to what God's Word says, now's the time. The entrance of God's Word will bring light to you. If you're in doubt, if you're in confusion, God's Word will help you to see and help bring clarity to your life. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Father, every single person that, that hears the sound of my voice today, dear God, that would just receive your word today. Receive, receive your word today, God. Open our heart, dear God, to receive your word. Open our heart, dear God, to show us the things that you want us to do. Show us the thing, dear God, that we are not to do. Father, we pray, dear God, the entrance of your word, it brings light. It gives us understanding to every area of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. If you're here t today, you're listening today, and you know you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, well, today is the day of salvation. The Bible says so. Today is the day. Don't wait for tomorrow because you don't know what tomorrow will bring. If God is putting upon your heart, if, God, if, there's, a, if there's a feeling, if there's a thought in your mind that you don't know God, then go to Him and simply say, God, forgive me. I want you to be a part of my life. I want you to cleanse my heart of all of my sins and, and, and make me your son, make me your daughter. All you have to do is do two things. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and confess him as your Lord and Savior. If that's you, if I'm speaking to you, let me say this prayer with you right now. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins to you. I ask you, God, to cleanse me of all the sins that I've ever committed. Cleanse me, God, of every unrighteous, every bad thing that I've ever done. And thank you, Father, for sending your son, Jesus, that I may have life and have life more abundantly. I believe in your son, Jesus, that he died on the cross for my sins. And I confess him as my Lord and Savior. And I invite him to be a part of my life. I invite him to be a part of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. If you said that prayer, you're saved. Jesus' blood has washed away your sins. And you have made, God has made a way that you can have eternal life with him. Amen, amen. amen. Thank you so much for watching our service today. Uh, let me give you a quick announcement again. I have a special announcement at the end today, so hang with me for just a few more minutes. But um, we will be bringing our service online to you for the next several weeks, uh, right here from our living room to wherever you're at. And we'll be doing this throughout the month of June. And as I said last week, we are praying and believing and are taking steps to, try, uh, to, 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 um, to, to find a place that we can call home for Greater Hope Church. We are looking at a place downtown, and, and it looks like it's, it's going to take place, and we are shooting for July. But I tell you what, we still need, we still need to, to finalize all the details. And once all those details are finalized, I'll let you know. Okay, I'm sorry if there was a, 
a hold up there. Our, our internet connection, I think, failed on us, and so I hope I didn't lose you. Um, uh, this is Greater Hope Church, and we uh, are just concluding our service today, and so um, thank you for hanging in there with me. I was just making a special announcement about um, our Zoom meetup, and uh, we do it at 7 o'clock every Wednesday, and it's a time that we just get together. It's kind of very in casual. Uh, we have a time of fellowship, a time of prayer, and then we also... Uh, we review and, and do a little Bible study. And so we invite you to be a part of that. I and mean, if you do, I'll have, to, I'll have to know what's your email address so I can send you a, a Zoom invite. So just put that in the chat if you would or just send us an instant message or, or uh, email us if you would and, and we'll definitely include you in our Zoom meetup. And so um, I, I want to I thank you all for your support to our church. And, and uh, you, you all have been so faithful in... in, in uh, in supporting us and blessing us and and we've been able to do some of the things in our community that we love to do we're we're going to be again supporting uh, some missionaries in ethiopia and so uh, as many things as we get into our new church building we're going to have a lot of expenses as well so thank you for your support i do want to bring to your attention different ways that you can give you can text to give at uh, 254-306-0705 or you can go to our website at greaterhope.church and there's a tab on there that you can go to our giving tab and give there as well. Or you can write a personal check like I do and just uh, you can mail it to Greater Hope Church at Post Office Box 12023, Colleen, Texas 76542. 76542. Those are the three ways that you can give to our church. And again, I want to thank you uh, so much for uh, for uh, being supporting our ministry and, and, and just... Uh, uh, being a part of what God is doing through Greater Hope Church. So thank you, thank you very much. At this time, as I said at, at the beginning of my message today, that I, I want to ad- just briefly address some things that, that we're going through uh, in our country right now. Just, there's a lot of civil unrest that is happening in our country, as we know, because of the death of, of George Floyd. And, you know, many people... Uh, are speaking out and, and just voicing their concern, voicing their opinion about, about his death, and as well as other issues that are being stirred up because of that, you know, racism and, and injustice, the rioting and the, and the violence that is going on, and many other things that, that, are, that are being talked about. Well, I'm not going to get into all these other issues, but one thing that I really feel God is wanting me to address is the hurt and the pain that some of our black and, and, uh, men and women are feeling, they're feeling after watching that, that very graphic video of, of uh, George Floyd's life being taken from him. I must say this, that the family of George Floyd, they need to have justice for their son. Yes. They need to have justice for the way that he died. Yes. For the way that he, because the way he died was completely wrong. No matter, it doesn't matter what his life was before that. Is that at that moment he, that was so very wrong in so many different ways. Yes. And, and what I want to say is that this video has obviously triggered and provoked some traumatic feelings in the lives of so many black women, men and women, and, and young people in, in our community. It has triggered some some feelings. And I've heard, so, I've heard so many personal stories of some, of some close friends of mine. I've also heard some stories, some very reliable people on social media of their own personal, own personal experience of being profiled, of being pulled over by police unnecessarily, guns drawn on them, and accused of things that were not justified. Personal stories. And the things that I, I want to bring about, about all this is that sometimes it's something that I also heard from several black men and their desire for. That they said this, that they don't want people to feel sorry for them. They don't want white people to feel guilty or ashamed. In fact, they even said, we don't want them, we don't want special treatment. What they do desire is to have equal treatment. And I agree totally hardly with that. Every person needs to have equal treatment treatment amen they also simply wanted people to acknowledge and to show empathy for their their own experience of of of, uh, that they have experienced in their own lives because these people um are 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 black brothers and sisters 
have experienced some traumatic and painful things in their life simply because of the color of their skin. And that is so totally wrong. Amen. Totally wrong. Even today, some people, uh, our black brothers and sisters, are experiencing those things. Their experience is real. And their pain is real. And we need to show that we care. Yes. And, you know, Greater Hope Church, Pastor Sharon and myself, our family, we, we believe and we care and we love you. And we acknowledge your pain. And we acknowledge that you, after hearing so many of your stories, we are so sorry for the experience that you went through. Yes. Every single human being that God ever created should be treated equally. Should be treated equally. With dignity and with value. Every single human being. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter your background. God created all people. And even, even though we may have a, you know, the sins of my past or the sins of anyone's lives shouldn't keep us from loving people. Every single human being God ever created needs to have that kind of treatment, equal treatment. And for all those that, that have not received equal treatment, we want to acknowledge your pain today. We want to acknowledge your pain, and we want to show compassion with, with all of, uh, of the God's love that we can muster for you. And we also want to take steps to be a part of the solution to the problem that is still in this country today. I don't know if we'll ever get to a point where we will have no racism. I don't, know if we'll, I, I don't think we'll ever get to the point that we'll have no sin in our life. See, God gives us the choice. God gives us all choice in every area of our life, to do right or to do wrong. And I don't think we can ever get to that perfect place until we get to heaven. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't stop trying to, to correct yes. those areas of our life that we need to. Let me share a scripture with you in John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. It says, A new command I give you, love one another. This is Jesus speaking. As I have loved you, you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. You know, with the same kind of love that God loved us, with the same kind of love that God showed to us, we can have that same giving spirit as we give love to, to the people around us. Every single pe person. Black, white, it does not matter. We need to show love to to one another, even with all of our, our own sins, even with all of our own differences, even if we don't always agree, we can still show love yes. to one another. And that's what Jesus is commanding us to do. Commanding us to do. Whatever solution that we may come up with, it must be wrapped, it must include the compassion of God, the love of God, and in the spirit of unity and in the bond of peace. I want to conclude with one last scripture today. And it kind of ties into my series of messages on being led by God. You know, today more than ever, we need to know how to be led by God and not by what we see and what we hear on social media in the news. Now more than ever, and I think this is probably why God put this upon my heart even before all this came, came into our focus. We need to be led by God and not by our feelings and, and our emotions. Many people have. I have at times. There's, you know, we all have, I'm sure. But we need to be careful that we are led by God. The Apostle Paul warns us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, he says this, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness, in heavenly places. You know, the issues that we deal with today, they go much, much deeper than just flesh and blood. That's what, Paul, uh, that's what Paul's warning is here. We deal with spiritual powers of darkness. A lot of the evil things that we see in our world, yes, people are doing it, but a lot of what's behind it comes from a spiritual darkness. And so as we address these different things in our life, as we address these injustices and, and, and the different things that happen in our world, we have to remember and get on our knees and pray that God will help us to come against this darkness, to come against this evil spirit. 
and that people's lives would be changed by the Spirit of God. And so I encourage you, as I encourage all of our Greater Hope family, that we get on our knees and we pray that the Spirit of God, the Spirit of love and unity and the bond of peace, just saturate our mind and that God would lead us and direct us to how to make our, make our world a better place to live. Again, my heart goes out to all of you that have experienced injustice, that have experienced things in your life that this event with George Floyd has triggered and brought back some memories and feelings and anger and, and I acknowledge that. I, I totally get that. And I'm sorry that, that you've had to experience those kind of things in your life as well. But let, through the Spirit of God, we can make things better. Amen? Amen? Well, let me pray with you as I dismiss you. Again, I apologize for the interruption in our, in our service today. I'm not sure what happened with our Internet, but uh, hopefully you, you are back on with us today. Just, just stretch out your hands. Let me bless you today. Lord, I ask you in Jesus' name just to bless your people. God, bless them and keep them. May you, give, may you uh, forgive them, may you heal them, and may you redeem them in Jesus' name. Crown them, God, with your loving kindness and your tender mercy. Satisfy their lips with good things that their youth is renewed like the eagle. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace uh, as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. May God bless you. I hope you see you this week at Wednesday night at 7 o'clock in our Zoom meetup. Have a great week. God bless.